food and sell Nigeria give before we go rest. As long as the number can come tell us, we know go rest. Peter Obi and uh, Atiku Abubakar, they don't come cry out. Say judgments where they give on on the 6th of September. Then suppose give them the uh, copy of the judgment so that they will go file appeal court matter. Now, they don't start delay taxes. The same thing what they do during tribunal. Some people they say they come out, they say, make Peter be go rest, make you no waste money. I beg now your money, Peter be they use. He say make you do go for me for him. He asks you to raise uh, money for him, make you run charity for him. Meanwhile, this same person where they talk, they ajack somebody mandates for in state. The person carry them go court. They don't the woman, they don't collect her mandate back to her. In the someone I see interview for this matter, in they say them go, see go. Court, they'll still go further because they need to look into this. Meanwhile, another person, won. in short, she not be hypocrites. They worry this our politicians. Them eh? guys, more than just what arise, uh, refry and arise, screw them. They don't analyze the matter. When I make sure, I'll go see you now for the next update. Thank you. Uh, I think we've talked about this ad nauseum. Um, as expected, as we analyzed yesterday, both parties were going to go to the Supreme Court. Going to the Supreme Court is to be able to deepen our jurisprudence. I mean. There's some contentious issue. I'd like to hear the Supreme Court sound off on Abuja status, for instance, and also everything around, um, you know, the electoral laws, more clarity, and this Beavers, you know, conundrum and all of that, this Beavers IRF conundrum. So and those are many other issues we would like the Supreme Court to serve on, uh, to, to sound on, so that we can, you know, get more insight and get more clarity. And very laymen like us, you know, should be able to get insight as regards this. But... Please, we should not do this thing to our country. The court should release the judgment so that people will be able to read through it and file their case. If you remember, this was part of the thing too that delayed the filing for the political parties because INEC would not release content of the materials that it used to do the elections. And we remember when they said they wanted to recalibrate the beavers and all of that. But in this case, it's totally different. I think the court will release it so that they'll be able to make quick applications between the 21 days threshold to be able to file so we can get clarity on this matter. Most of them, I'm sure, they didn't say anything tangible. They just said they rejected the result because they don't have the facts of the matter. So they have not seen that certified true copy of the judgment. I'm sure their lawyers will dive in that and be able to look through all of that process. As regards the president, yeah, <clears throat> he will be very excited. I mean, no president wants to go through this ordeal of the uncertainty and all of that. Even, people, even when people have questioned, okay, why did he have the boldness to be able to go to India while this case was on, even when the conference is going to start, it's going to India to start between the 9th and the 10th. But he's been able to claw back by saying, yes, there was something on the sidelines called the B20, and they've been able to get some deals. We announced the $14 trillion deal and all of that. So that's the balancing of that argument. So he was really shocked, very, very, very excited. He was so excited he couldn't sleep. Good for him. And... Other candidates have said, oh, they reject this result. Let's see how all of this pans out in the Supreme Court. But what is certain is that, apart from the Supreme Court, concerning this process, there are a lot more things that Nigerians will need to take back to the National Assembly. Because if the court, in the appeal court, is ruling that, okay, the use of IRF and other things are not being mandatory, and they can do these things at their discretion, despite the fact that they are copious evidence, and there's a video circulating currently that shows Mr. Festus Okoye talking about the fact that Beavers is mandatory in consonance with the electoral laws. And also the process of transmitting results in consonance with the electoral laws. So if all of this has been said, then if the court says otherwise, and the Supreme Court also affirms the appeal court, then probably to be able to deepen our electoral process, there's a need to go back to the National Assembly and say, okay, let us hedge these laws and properly codify them. Because the reason why we brought technology to our electrical process in the first place is to be able to avoid the charade of elections we used to have over the years. And that's why a lot of people participated, especially the young people. And that's why INEC is being called to question now as regards what he said and what we are seeing. I yield the floor. Okay, number one, President uh, Tinubu saying that he was excited. Uh, and as a result of that, he slept late and he got late to a business meeting uh, in India, just shows that he's a human being after all. You know, he prefaced his uh, contribution at that event by saying he had a little hangover uh, yesterday morning. 
and all of that. It shows it's human. And it's also human to be excited, to also have great expectations, as he pointed out. Two major things he did yesterday, the business meeting, and later in the day, he met with uh, Nigerians in India. Surprising, you know, so many Nigerians in New Delhi alone. I'm sure if you were to take a census of Nigerians in the whole of India, <laughs> their population will probably be, you know, as huge as that of uh, people living in Agege or Ikeja. But in any case, that's just an, as an aside. One major revelation, again, that we have seen, apart from the business deals, was uh, President Tinubu uh, telling his audience that uh, he used to be a security guard. That's, that's quite a revelation. Well, I hope some of his skills as a security guard in his early days, he will bring it to bear on his uh, present uh, assignment. He said he also used to be a teacher. Well, education is one of the things we're worried about. We hope that, uh, you know, that uh, old knowledge as a teacher will guide him. Then above all, he says his uh, ambition is to uh, end the regime of bad leadership in Nigeria. Yes, Nigerians are looking forward uh, to good leadership in all of that regard. And he said, well, he's relieved that his job is secured. And that's where I'll begin from. Well, what we have been told now is that, well, he, sh he, sh he should moderate his jubilation because the matter is not yet over. As uh, you know, uh, Mr. Peter Obi of the Labour Party indicated uh, at his uh, residence yesterday in Onitsha, Anambra State, and as uh, uh, former Vice President Atiku Abu Abubakar also pointed out at the PDP Secretariat in Abuja yesterday, both uh, opposition leaders made it clear that yes, they respect the judgment of the, of the AP court, of the uh, presidential election petition court, but that they do not think that the judgment has given substantial justice. So, uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar says he has instructed his lawyers to proceed immediately uh, to the Supreme Court, where the battle continues, or where the war continues, whichever you know, suits the purpose in this instance. And that whether he wins or not at the Supreme Court, he just wants it on record that he did his best to fight for democracy and that he remains uh, confident in the ability of the judiciary uh, to, you know, uh, protect the wishes of the people. And significantly, he slammed INEC, accused INEC of undermining the introduction of technology, where it's for his lawyers to identify the issues that they want the Supreme Court to look at. In the case of uh, uh, Mr. Peter Obi, speaking in nature, he himself uh, more or less said the same thing that he doesn't think that uh, justice has been done, that he, uh, he respects the ruling of the court, but that he and his party disagree with the reasoning and the conclusions. Now, it, is, it remains for his own lawyers to, you know, who have also been instructed to proceed to the Supreme Court. So this is in line with uh, Section 285 of the Constitution, and it's with, perfectly within the rights of these opposition leaders to say that they want to exhaust the entire process, which then leads me to the reactions. Uh, uh, former Governor Wiki, now Minister of the FCT, has, uh, has said, oh, Mr. Peter Obi is complaining about the judiciary. But when the same judiciary uh, ruled in his favor to become governor of Anambra State, he didn't complain then. Well, I think that's a cheap shot. You know, it's entirely be beside the point. The circumstances are different. It's perfectly within the rights of uh, Mr. Peter Obi and uh, uh, Waziri Adamawa Abubakar to say they're going to the Supreme Court. Now, second, Governor Yahya Bello of uh, Kogi State has also said he's appealing to uh, Mr. Pito B and, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Waziri Adamawa not to go on appeal, not to waste uh, uh, resources, and that they should come and join hands with uh, President Tinubu to move uh, Nigeria forward. But when the same uh, Governor Yahya Bello was asked about uh, the uh, cases involving three senators in Kogi State. He said, oh, this is a democracy. We are going on appeal. We will make sure that the representation of, uh, of uh, APC in the Senate is three over three. Isn't that contradictory? Isn't that hypocritical? On one hand, he is defending the right of his own APC senators to go <laughs> to the <laughs> upper court. At the same time, he's uh, uh, advising other people not to disturb the APC. So this is the kind of double standards that we see on display. However, the people that need to be cautioned are the spokespersons. They seem to have returned to work in, in a fury 
Uh, you know, there was a time when the matter was in court. We had some relief from loquacious spokespersons, but they are back. You see APC firing from this side, PDP firing from that side. I think that this spokesperson should take the cue from their leaders. I mean, uh, Mr. Peter Obi is not belligerent. Uh, Atiku Abubakar is not belligerent. They have both said they respect, you know, the, uh, 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 the uh, position of the, uh, of the uh, election petition tribunal. But the spokespersons have started this round of name calling, you know, exchanging brickbats. I don't think we need anybody to heat up the system. The judiciary should be allowed uh, to do its work. Finally, the opposition lawyers, lawyers of the Labour Party and also the People's Democratic Party, as at 7.25 p.m. yesterday, were complaining that they have not received the certified true copy of the judgment that was delivered on Wednesday. And that given the fact that they have 21 days to file their appeal, they do not want a situation whereby delay in receiving the CTC will limit you know, the scope within which they can file their uh, petition. So uh, whatever can be done to make sure that that CTC is released, because in any case, they can't file, uh, you know, their appeal at the Supreme Court on the basis of newspaper reports or newspaper commentary. You know, they will have to have concrete, uh, you know, material. As for INEC, well, INEC, so much said about INEC uh, yesterday. Uh, the opposition parties, they are not sparing uh, INEC, but nobody should hit all the polity. They should allow their lordships to do their work. And lawyers as professionals, they will know what to take uh, to the Supreme Court. But whatever it is, at the end of the day, everybody should give peace a chance. The bigger outcome, of course, will be further review of the electoral framework. Because each election cycle, we learn certain lessons. We identify those lessons. And I hope that on the basis of uh, those lessons, the APC-dominated National Assembly will see need to take another look at the uh, you know, electoral act as it is. As for the other details, let's leave that, you know, uh, to the courts and the lawyers uh, to determine uh, what will be the outcome, eventual outcome of this process, namely the presidential election process. Well, um, following yesterday's press conference, the World Press Conference by former Vice President Atiku Abubakar and the address on the press conference by the Labour Party's presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, it's obvious that the road, we haven't come to the end of the road yet, as they both have said very emphatically that they will be taking this matter up to the Supreme Court. In fact, um, Mr. Atiku Abubakar had mentioned that the PPC was not the final arbiter, and this was agreed by Mr. Peter Obi, who said that they didn't have the final say and it didn't end with them. And they were going to, or they were hopeful that their matter before the Supreme Court would get judicial review and perhaps they would be able to challenge the decisions reached by the PPC. But beyond that, since the, um, their press conference has been widely discussed this morning, I'd like to just touch on another aspect that they really emphasized on. Again, both of them in agreement in terms of their view of the way that INEC handled the last elections. In fact, I'd like to take a quote from, um, from our vice president and also from Mr. Peter Obi with regards to how they view INEC and the role that INEC plays in matters of election and election um, petitions with regards to perhaps stealing the number of petitions we have if only that institution can carry out its duties and functions effectively. So, uh, Mr. Peter, uh, Mr. At, uh, Alaji Atikwa Abubakar said, our gains in ensuring transparent elections through the deployment of technology was heavily compromised by INEC in the way it managed the last presidential election. And I'm afraid that the judgment of the court, as rendered by the presidential election petition tribunal, failed to restore confidence in our dreams of free and fair elections devoid of human manipulations. I'll come to that shortly, but let me um, uh, share also what Mr. Peter Obi said. He underscored the pivotal role of solid national institutions and public confidence in them in a thriving democracy, pointing out that the electoral litigations can be significantly reduced if INEC discharges its statutory functions transparently and fairly. So this is their position. Beyond the ruling of the court is the fact that we wouldn't be here um, or perhaps we wouldn't have as many cases if only the institution responsible for carrying out elections or for managing the process does its job excellently. And this is part of the petitions um, that they had prayed before the court in, in uh, the PPC. 
And for a number of people who heard the judgment around, especially the use of IREV, it was quite disappointing because one of the big, big conversations before elections and why, what inspired, I guess, a number of young people and generally Nigerians to give the election cycle a chance and not, and you know, have an improved system where we didn't have voter apathy as much as we did perhaps in the last election was that it was meant to be a game changer whereby as you voted, as people voted, people were, the results were transmitted live to, um, the, um, to, to a server. But the ruling here states that this isn't, it's discretionary. So it's at the discretion of INEC. And not just in the last election, but in previous elections, we have had challenges with the way that elections are run and the transparency, or in some instances, the complicity of INEC with, the, with, with certain parties or the ruling party in election irregularities or malpractices. Of course, this is, these are mere allegations, and the proof of burden is on the petitioners to demonstrate that indeed, you know, they were in, you know, the elections were in fairly, fairly run. Now, what, this, what happens in this case is that even in instances, as we saw in the case of the Kogi elections and the senatorial elections, where now uh, Mrs. Natasha Poti Udwagan has been restored as a candidate by the court based on the difference in votes, what then happens to the institution that was responsible for that process, who in their carrying out of their duties didn't quite do, um, um, d d do their due diligence and under their watch, election malpractice, um, manipulation of votes, numbers of votes occurred. The issue we have is that even when a court rules in that line, there's, there are no um, punitive measures for the, uh, for the institution. We do hardly revisit the process and why someone in INEC shouldn't come under investigation or perhaps some form of punishment for that happening. Why did it happen? And so in situations, in this matter, the court hasn't ruled that um, INEC has done, you know, in terms of wrongdoing. But it gives us an opportunity in terms of lessons learned to see even the way our institutions are run. If not, come the next election cycle, we're going to be back here again, petitioned. And then rather than the people deciding and expressing their will in terms of who they want to be um, their candidate or who they want to be their leaders, it's, it's decided by courts. It's decided by a panel of judges. And so it's important for us to take away that big lesson from the last election cycle, to strengthen our institutions. And where possible, let there be a forward, an independent investigation into the processes, because if the people complain that the process was flawed and there are reports to that effect, that there were irregularities which marked the process, then it cannot just end with this, you know, with the, um, the court ruling. Yes, it's important. It's great they're taking it to, to the Supreme Court. But INEC has a case to answer to the people as well. And this is what the two um, principal um, petitioners had mentioned in their speech yesterday. Again, as Ms. Um, Alaji Atiko Bubaka mentioned, his constitutionally guaranteed right is to go on appeal to the Supreme Court. And now all eyes are back on the judiciary, this time the Supreme Court's justices, to ensure that this case is um, reviewed uh, judicially as, as the ought. And at the end of the day, some gray areas, especially as we have talked about a number of times, the 25% issue in Abuja, Abuja not being given special status, now being recognized as a 37th state in Nigeria, and those other matters with regards to the electoral law and framework will be addressed.